As there is no threat to the integrity, Your Honor, of the remaining proceedings from Trump's protected political advocacy, the bias reflected in this court's handling of this issue is manifest. There is no reason to continue to have him gag. Trial is over. Now, according to the public reports around July 29th of this year, Authentic's founder, a partner and colleague of Your Honor's daughter, leads a group called White Dudes for Harris. Oh, that racist clan. President Trump respectfully requests that the court address the act actual conflict and the appearances of impropriety by recusing yourself prior to the resolution of the pending presidential immunity motion. Judge Murkan facing a Kamala problem. We know that the judge's daughter had a very interesting connection with Joe Biden, but Joe Biden's not running for office anymore because he ran away like a coward after they threw him out. But now it's Kamala who's in charge. And so does Judge Murkan in New York, the one where Alvin Bragg prosecuted Trump on 34 rigged felony charges, does she, the judge's daughter, have a connection with Kamala? Well, turns out, yeah, she does. In fact, this is the judge's daughter's website. You can see this is Authentic Campaigns. She has a list here of who they are. This is about Authentic. We're an award-winning digital marketing agency that works for Democrats, and they do. And here's our work. If you click this tab, you'll scroll down. You'll say it's a bunch of lefties, including Katie Hobbs from Arizona. Ooh. We also have more. Keep on scrolling. Look at this one. Joe Biden. They work for Joe Biden. This is Lauren Mercon company, right? She's a high qualified credential person here who works on all of these building out their portfolio and Joe Biden's on the list. And so when you scroll down, you're going to see just a bunch of other organizations, but the big one, the concerning one, okay, Joe Biden's not around anymore. They already said Joe Biden is a problem. Judge said it's not close enough. And so we're not going to recuse ourselves. But now watch this. We keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and featured clients are Biden Harris. And below that, dun, 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 Kamala Harris for president. President. See that right there? Yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. It's right there. Kamala Harris for president. So if the judge's daughter is working for Kamala Harris for president, does that mean the judge might be a little bit biased, lacking impartiality? Yeah, theoretically, because their interests are aligned. She wants to help Kamala beat Trump and daddy can put Trump in prison. So they are working together to achieve their political ends. This is from their website. It's public right now. Everybody can see it. And so Trump's defense has now come out and said, all right, Judge Mercon, we've got enough of this, all right. Says, listen, Honorable Juan, Juan Mercon, acting justice, and that's an understatement, saying, you're on the Supreme Court for the criminal term. This is the case of people versus Trump. And as a reminder, this is a little permission slip form that we have to submit because this judge is such Mercon that he has said, don't you file big filings publicly, okay? Just write this little permission slip and then I'll let you know if I want to hear more from you. And so Trump's people, it's so ridiculous. We even have to go through it this way, but they have the ultra narrow margins. As you can see, you're like, what the heck's going off this filing? Why is it like coming off the page? Cause the judge says you only get one page. So they're squeezing every freaking character that they can on here. They could have maybe put one more, you know, just a couple words there, pick your three, whatever, put them in there. That's it. So it's pretty damn good. And they probably broke like three printers, margins, errors. We can't do it, captain. You know, the routine, but here is what they say. <laughs> All right, Judge Mercon. in light of the long standing an extremely beneficial working relationship between your honor's daughter, Lauren, and Kamala, who recently became the presumptive presidential nominee of the Democrats because of this little love fest between them. We respectfully submit this pre-motion letter to renew our request that the court recuse itself. You, this letter can be deemed the motion, and we request permission to file a reply within one week of Bragg's opposition, which we expect to happen any minute now. Alvin Bragg will come back. No, your honor, you're totally unbiased. Kamala is no different than Joe. You were already saying that you're disconnected because your daughter's not a close enough relationship. There's not enough proximity there to cause a conflict of interest. And so we just sub out Joe with Kamala. Okay. So the recusal application, continues Trump's defense, is based on the state and federal constitutions. You need to go. And judiciary law, section 14. And New York code, section 100.2 and 0.3. And we incorporate by reference the other legal authorities and evidence submitted with President Trump's prior recusal motion, which you ignored and denied, saying, all right, judge, President Trump is the Republican nominee for the presidency and the leading candidate in the 2024 presidential election. Now, Kamala
Kamala Harris emerged as his presumptive opponent after it became apparent to the public that the Biden administration's lawfare against President Trump was motivated by President Biden's alarming decline, evaporating in front of our eyes. So then Harris immediately framed her candidacy with a specific false reference to this case. She called it, she's talking about it in her campaigning right now, a prosecutor versus a convicted felon. So Harris is now bringing in this rigged prosecution in her little campaign. Your Honor, Murkan has insisted on maintaining an unconstitutional gag order that we're going to come back to because the Court of Appeals has ruled on that, backed by threats of imprisonment made during this trial. If Trump even says a thing, you're going to lock him up. He can't even talk about the judge's daughter or the judge. He can talk about the judge, but not those specific things, or, you know, the conflict that the judge has as a result of his daughter working for Kamala, previously Joe. So Trump is prevented from fully responding to that inaccurate attack. They can say what they want about him, but he can't respond. Now, making matters worse, Your Honor, this week, the Biden administration unveiled an unprecedented plot to mount a political assault on the Supreme Court because they granted presidential immunity. And that immunity is central to Trump's pending motion in this case. Now, the gag order even prevents Trump from engaging in constitutionally protected speech. And it prevents us, by the way, from hearing it too, by drawing attention to the obvious connection between Biden and the prosecution. No candidate, which as we know, through Matthew Colangelo, the prosecutor who was the third in charge, third in line at Biden's DOJ, before he decided, you know, I like New York. I'm going to go hang out with Alvin. No candidate for office, much less a presidential candidate, has ever faced such an insidious prior restraint. No, that is absolutely true. Nothing like this ever. It's 234 years of historical precedent. Democrats right in the shredder with the Constitution. As there is no threat to the integrity, Your Honor, of the remaining proceedings from Trump's protected political advocacy, the bias reflected in this court's handling of this issue is manifest. There is no reason to continue to have him gag. Trial is over. All of delineated justifications for why he can't speak political speech and why we can't hear that political speech no longer apply. Trial's over. Not concerned about witnesses. Not concerned about jurors. Not concerned with the lawful administration. If there's a sentencing hearing, that's it. That's left. If that even happens. So get rid of the gag. So your honor's daughter, they get into it, has a long-standing relationship with Harris, including work for political campaigns. She has obtained and stands to obtain in the future extensive financial, professional, and personal benefits from her relationship with Harris. Now, your honor's daughter was publicly critical of President Trump's use of Twitter. We played that clip. She was on a podcast saying, daughter was on a podcast saying, my dad doesn't like when the president uses Twitter. Says it's unbecoming of a politician. Now, this was a central issue in the pending presidential immunity motion. And it was described a discussion on that topic with your honor that evidence is pre judgment of President Trump's official acts arguments. So the judge has already come to his conclusion. Now in 2020, judge, your honor's daughter, Lauren, was openly hostile to President Trump on social media. She was posting all over the place. Your honor's daughter, Lauren, is also a part owner and executive at Authentic Campaigns, which was the top vendor for Harris's prior presidential campaign based on disbursements of nearly $5 million. It also touted its subsidy subsequent work for the Biden-Harris campaign in connection with at least the 2020 election. Probably ongoing, right? So we don't know how far back those little monikers on the website go. They're still up there, though. And Harris is running for president again. So did she just continue on? She's like, well, we already had an account with you, so just carry it on. We'll just, you know, you already had some funds left over from that other thing, so just, you know, parlay it over. And made tens of millions of dollars by helping other politicians disseminate political advertisements based on this case. Now, on October 20th, 2023, during this case, Authentic posted an image of Harris to its Instagram account with the caption saying happy birthday to the MVPs of MVPs. Oh, isn't that nice? At Kamala Harris saying here's a little throwback to when she stopped by our DC office to celebrate the launch of her presidential campaign in 2019. Oh, how far we've come. So they love each other. Now, according to the FEC filings, Authentic has received over $12 million in disbursements from Democrat and progressive politicians and PAC since January 2024. Now, although Authentic restricted its Twitter account account following scrutiny of this recusal issue, the company's public Twitter profile currently features Harris. Amazing. Now, according to the public reports around July 29th of this year, Authentic's founder, a partner and colleague of your honor's daughter, leads a group called White Dudes for Harris. Oh, 
that racist clan, Kamala's communist clan, joining up on their Zoom calls, raising millions of dollars, BFFs with the judge's daughter. It's perfect. Was the judge on the call? Well, he's from what, like Columbia or something? Is he allowed on that call? I don't think so. Sorry, judge. So, which has raised millions of dollars for Harris's current campaign against President Trump. Now, the court's unjust and unconstitutional gag order continues to restrict President Trump's ability to respond to Harris and to address these topics with the American people. And so regardless of intent, Your Honor, decisions by you in this court on the pending presidential immunity motion and that any sentencing would benefit not only Harris, but also the professional aspirations and the financial status of your daughter and Authentic. And by the way, remember, Authentic was also running ads talking about this case. They were doing it for Pencil Neck Schiff, but they were running ads saying, good news, Trump was arraigned in court. All in a manner consistent with the prohibited political contributions by Your Honor that led to a caution from the Commission on Judicial Conduct. Now, given the proximity to the last election, Judge, and the pernicious effect of the gag order, President Trump's concerns are not, quote, hypothetical at all, as you last asserted last August. Now, President Trump's second recusal motion was also accompanied by evidence attached to a sworn affirmation, and not, as Your Honor indicated, it wasn't innuendos, it wasn't unsupported speculation. We had a written document and affirmation that was submitted. So, recent developments, Judge, are even more concrete than the last time. And the court has not addressed any of these issues at a level of detail sufficient to repair the lack of public confidence in the integrity of these proceedings. And so accordingly, President Trump respectfully requests that the court address the actual conflict and the appearances of impropriety by recusing yourself prior to the resolution of the pending presidential immunity motion. So remember, Trump and the defense and the judge and the government are all waiting for a decision on September 6th. They're coming back later in September for a sentencing proceeding, but they're saying, Judge, you have to go now. We're not going to wait for you to decide this immunity motion. You're biased as hell. Your daughter is making moolah off Kamula is what she's making. So Todd Blanche and Emil Bove send that over and it's just nicely done. So they get one page. They crammed every freaking word they could squeeze in there, man. It's hard to use that F-bomb there, but it's true. It's like impressive. So we have that. Now the Court of Appeals there in New York continues on with the gag because they're pieces of work like the rest of the judicial body in New York. We see here, Blanche Law signs this one for the petitioner and this is the order from the Supreme Court. So these are the parties on it, Bragg, Blanche, and the rest of them. Here we have the official Court of Appeals for New York saying that here petitioner says that there's a cause of action here. Trump has been prohibited from communicating pursuant to the gag order. So Trump has challenged this. Following the verdict, so the case is over, or not yet, we have sentencing, Judge Murkan granted some of the motion, terminated some of the provisions that allowed him to talk about witnesses and the jury. But the judge maintained that the court and the district attorney staff were thereby continued to be covered in the aftermath. And so you can't talk about the judge's daughter who works for Kamala, saying that Trump's contention is that the conclusion of the trial is now a change in circumstance, okay? It's over. And so we should be able to talk about this. The courts, they say, are allowed to do this, right? Now, courts are empowered to protect against the unfair administration of justice. And the fair administration of justice includes sentencing, they say. So just because the verdict has happened doesn't mean that it's a free-for-all, they're saying. Indeed, under the CPL, a criminal action terminates when we have a sentence or other final disposition in a criminal court. And this is an interesting one, right? For all the people who are running around screaming, oh, Trump's already been convicted and all of that. Like, case is over. It's convicted. Now, it's the law says right here, cited by them. Under CPL, criminal action terminates with the imposition of a sentence or some other final disposition. It's not a final disposition. They're even saying it, right? Gag order's in effect because it's not final. So he's a convicted felon? I mean, like, not really, like, kind of, like, one half of a convicted felon. Like, that's it. He needs a sentence until it's, like, official. Now, accordingly, since the underlying criminal action remains pending, it's not over. So, okay, Justice Mercon did not act in excess of jurisdiction by maintaining the narrowly tailored protections in paragraph B. So you can't talk about my daughter. Contrary to the Trump's contentions, government Bragg's evidentiary submissions demonstrate that Alvin Bragg got some nasty threats. He's so, you know, pressed, of course, after the jury verdict and it continued to pose a significant and imminent threat. And so we've considered Trump's requests, find them unavailing. Gag order remains in place. Still can't talk about the judge's daughter, even though she works for Kamala and Joe Biden, saying the unfair administration 
of justice, the courts can protect against that. So Trump can't talk about all of the corruption that's happening in the New York system from top to bottom. Everywhere we go, Judge Kaplan at the federal level, we had Cy Vance leave, brought in Alvin Bragg. He brings in Colangelo. They rig these cases. You have Tish James rigging it at the AG's office. The whole system there is just insane. Even the appellate courts are like, well, yeah, nobody needs to hear from Trump. The First Amendment is supposed to protect against this to stop them from covering up their corruption, but they'll continue to gag him. So the immunity decision from the Supreme Court said that Trump was in fact immune or at least had a presumption of immunity and a bunch of the evidence that was submitted in this case was official acts. They actually brought witnesses in to testify about the work at the White House. So Mercon goofed big time and now they're going to try to just squeeze what they can out of this gag orders and extensions of hearings so that the political pain and pressure can continue to come from them. But we'll be here continuing to cover it, my friends. And so thank you for subscribing wherever it is you're watching this. We'll look forward to seeing you back here on the next one.